Hey there, welcome to another video from the Grove Studio. I wanted to do a little comparison today. I've heard a few photographers recently talking about how they really rely on using Lightroom's photo merge tool to create HDR image to blend their bracketed shots together. And this is a great tool to use, but I always recommend learning how to take your bracketed shots and send them out to Photoshop, do your blending by hand using masked layers in Photoshop, and then shoot it back to Lightroom to continue editing. And I wanted to take a look really quick at the comparison by showing what happens when you're blending the same two photos but you do it, I wanted to take a look at what happens with those photos when Lightroom merges them and what happens when I hand blend them. So here we have, we're in Lightroom and we have this photo right here and that photo right there. So these two are gonna be blended together. And we can see here, this Photoshop file right here is the one that I've already blended. And we'll take a look at that one in Photoshop so you can see the two layers. But here on the far right, you see the version that is already blended, but it was automatically done by Lightroom using the Photo Merge HDR tool. And just so you know, that tool, you can find it by selecting the two layers you want to blend together, or more if you have more than that, and right-clicking or on a Mac pressing Control and tapping, and then go to Photo Merge HDR. So if you do that, it will open up. Actually, I'll show you really quick what it does. Photo, photo Merge HDR, and it opens this dialog, and it shows a little preview of what it's going to look like. So I'm going to cancel because I've already done this. And when it did the merge, this is what it did for me. So let's take a look at this one first, and we can see what it did. Now, I haven't touched this photo at all since it merged it together. And what I found interesting when I first started using this tool, and I recently started playing with it because I wanted to see how it compared. The interesting thing is not only does it blend the photos together, but it then also applies some adjustments to the sliders to help create that HDR look. So you can see here it lowered the exposure, upped the contrast, the highlights are a little darker, or way darker, the shadows are way brighter. It adjusted the blacks and whites, and it did all of this to help kind of balance out the highlights and the shadows to help further create that HDR look. If I reset the sliders on this merged photo, this is what I get. So you can see it's a little bit overexposed here, and there's a little bit of distortion that I'm guessing it corrected manually. Okay, well, I'm not sure where it corrected the distortion because it does seem to have correct, corrected it a little bit, but. The main thing is the highlights and the shadows. It definitely adjusts the sliders to help control it. So that was one thing that is really different because then when you go to do your edits, you're not starting with a clean slate of sliders. You are having to adjust their adjustments, so to speak. So that's a little bit of a shift from what you would normally do when you're blending or when you're editing. So it's something to keep in mind, for example, if you use presets for your batch editing, say you're doing a really quick real estate shoot, you don't wanna put a lot of time into it, you don't wanna hand blend. If you're applying a preset, then this one's gonna need a little bit more tweaking because you're applying this preset to a photo that's already had adjustments made to it. So it's gonna look a little bit different it's gonna need a little bit more adjustment and a little more tweaking after you apply the preset. So just something to keep in mind. The other thing I wanted to compare, and let me get these two out of the way. So these are the two photos. On the left is the one that I hand blended, on the right is the one that Lightroom blended for me. And instantly the main thing that jumps out of me, out at me is that the Lightroom photo merged photo is overall quite darker. And 
that's something that personally I don't love. I I want to adjust the really over exposed areas and bring up some of the shadows, but their their balancing of the light and dark is a little bit too much for me for my personal taste. It doesn't feel like how I want it to feel. So through doing the manual blending in Photoshop, that's something that I can have more control over. So it's also a matter of how much control do you want over that photo. And if it's a shoot that it's super low budget, you can't really put a lot of time into it at all, then you may have to just do the automatic photo merge and do some quick slider adjustment magic and do the best you can. But if you're able to, I highly recommend learning how to do the hand blending with the masked layers in Photoshop because then you're going to have so much more control over what gets blended and how. And I want to show you exactly what I mean by that. So this is that same Photoshop file. And these are the two layers right here. Now you can see, here's the base one. It's a little bit darker. And you can see that the living room area is pretty well exposed, but the rest of the area around it is a little too dark. So I use the top layer, which is brighter, to brighten up all of the dark areas, fill in some of those shadows. And I select exactly where I want that to fill in using a brush that is masking over top of that layer. So if I turn that mask off, this is what this top layer looks like. It's the brighter exposure of the two. But I'm very selective on what I use it for. So this shows you kind of the adjustments that I made right there. Now, the fact that I can bring it into Photoshop and I can choose exactly where to mask and where not and how strongly to mask, that gives me all the control in the world that I want. So when I take it back to Lightroom, the nice thing is that if I'm on this Photoshop file, this is the one that I hand blended, and I go to the develop module, I'm starting with a blank slate. I'm starting with a blank canvas of sliders. Everything is at zero. And then I can start applying a preset to start out, or I can start making my manual adjustments with the sliders. I can add brushes. I can add gradients, whatever I need to do. But it's more of I'm starting with a blank canvas. So they're good and bad to doing either. Um, the Photoshop hand blending method is, in my opinion, preferred if you're able to do it, but it's more time consuming and it does take practice. You have to definitely get comfortable with masking and kind of going back and forth between Lightroom and Photoshop. So it takes a little bit more of a learning curve, but once you start getting used to it, it is extremely beneficial and you have so much more control over what the final look of your photo is. However, if you just don't have a budget or time to be able to really hand blend and give it that much attention, then the Lightroom Photo Merge HDR tool is fantastic for getting the job done and giving you that blended base that you need to quickly tweak it and get the final product to your client. So that's it. I wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison. I hope this has helped. There's no right answer to how to do it. But I'm hoping that by comparing side by side and seeing how the processes are different, that you can realize when you might want to use one tool over the other. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, please click like. If you like this channel and want to hear more, please subscribe to the channel. And that's it for today. Thank you so much, guys. I will see you in the next video.